सो ओवरऑल अगर मैं बोलूँ ब्रॉडली स्पीकिंग कॉन्सेप्ट ये है कि जैसे फैमिली मेडिसिन की ट्रेनिंग के दौरान जो ट्रेनी है जिसने प्राइमरी केयर प्रैक्टिस करनी है एज ही और शी इज गिवन रोटेशन थ्रू डिफरेंट स्पेशलिटीज टू गिव दम एक्सपोजर के दूसरे स्पेशलिस्ट कैसे सोचते हैं उनके क्या स्किल सेट्स हैं क्या बेसिक चीज़ें जानना समझना जरूरी है हम उसको रेप्लिकेट करने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं जैसे कि नाहिद ने कहा वी हैव बिन डूइंग अ लॉर्ड ऑफ दिस ऑनलाइन एजुकेशन स्पेशली मोर रिसेंटली शाहिद एन आई डिड दिस वेरी सक्सेसफुल ऑनलाइन कोविड वेबिनार एंड दिस इज अवर फोर्टी सेवंथ वेबिनार इन द सीरीज Uh, and we have uh, a couple of more and we'll hit 50 before we finish that and go on to this merit specialty rotations so what we want to do this is our vision statement we want to create this kind of a virtual specialty rotations with active learning so ye bahut important hai samajhna ki hum khali बैठ के वेबिनार या सेमिनार्स नहीं करना चाहते कि आप आए और बैठ के सुने और चले जाएं हमारी कोशिश ये है कि हम आपको एज अ पार्टिसिपेंट इंगेज करें हम ये असेस करें कि आपकी लर्निंग क्या हो रही है कितनी हो रही है आर यू गेटिंग द स्किल सेट्स यू नीड और नॉट आर यू गेटिंग समथिंग यूजफुल आउट ऑफ इट और नॉट एंड दैट विल बी डन इन ऑनलाइन सेशन प्लस दे विल बी सम असाइनमेंट्स फॉर रजिस्टर्ड पार्टिसिपेंट्स फॉर द सर्टिफिकेट ट्रैक there will be discussions with the specialists who are from pakistan from abroad from uk australia and us uh, and middle east and this will this is designed to complement the foundational teaching in primary care or family medicine that is already going on pakistan mein mashallah bahut acche programs hain jo ke one year certificate ya short workshops wagaira karwa rahe hain to provide essential skills uh, understanding a research publication designing a research uh, or you know even basic setting up a clinic जो बेसिक एथिक्स और इस तरह के रिकॉर्ड कीपिंग के बेसिक क्वेश्चंस हैं जीपीस के देर आर बीइंग वेरी प्रॉपरली डन इन व्हाट वी वांट टू डू इज नॉट टू रेप्लिकेट व्हाट दे आर ऑलरेडी डूइंग बट टू कॉम्प्लीमेंट इट बाय बिल्डिंग ऑन इट कि हम इसको हम कह लें कि ये सेकंड स्टेप है उस बेसिक फाउंडेशन के प्रोग्राम्स के ऊपर टू प्रोवाइड अ स्पेशलिटी एक्सपोजर नाउ रादर देन जस्ट अ बेसिक जनरल प्राइमरी केयर दैट दे आर ऑलरेडी गेटिंग Uh, and we especially want to focus in the gap of specialty care in the underserved areas to ye badi achhi baat kisi ne mujhe kahi ke jo primary care physician hai jo gp hai wo ek underserved area mein ek small town mein wohi unka neurologist hai wohi unka cardiologist hai wohi unka rheumatologist hai wohi unka infectious disease specialist hai so we want to empower them with this extra knowledge and skill sets that will help them do their job better that they are already doing and hopefully they can get a step higher uh, with this uh, effort so why we thought about this uh, here's some uh, numbers main jab neurologist hu aur main neurology ki jab training ki baat karta hu to 200 million ki population hai pakistan mein aur 200 se kareeb neurologist hain iska matlab hai ki 1 million neurologist ke liye 1 million logon ke liye ek neurologist hai so neurology cannot be covered by neurologist in pakistan it's possible nahi hai agar main isko compare karu jaise main nebraska mein hu nebraska mein 2 million population hai us hisab se 2 million do neurologists bante hain pure nebraska ke liye aur khali meri university mein is waqt 40 neurologists hain there are 40 neurologists in, in just the university of nebraska medical center is ke alawa yahan pe creighton university hai private setups hain dusre hospitals hain so on and so forth there's probably about 100 or so neurologists in in nebraska right now uh, in contrast to two per uh, you know uh, for uh, comparison with pakistani numbers but at the same time there are 140000 physicians in 2014 jo ke number ab, uh, definitely bad gaya this is the last published number i could find from literature or 110000 general physicians hai one per 2000 population hai agar hum unko unke basic neurologist bana de to we have immediately increased the neurology care by a thousand fold or or more so that is kind of what we're thinking that we should empower the general physicians into being able to do more uh, one question i often ask jab main neurology ko padhana shuru kiya pakistan mein why can't we train more neurologists from pakistan ye aisa kyun hai ki jis 200 hain ye 220 hain ye 215 hain to mere khayal mein usme ek bahut bada issue ye hai ki pakistan mein jo training programs hain unki tadad bahut thodi hai even though कि एक बहुत से ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम ऐसे हैं जो सिंगल पर्सन फैकल्टी है जो कि एक्सेप्टेबल ही नहीं है अमेरिका में कि आप तीन या चार से कम फैकल्टी पे रेजिडेंट रख नहीं सकते ट्रेनिंग नहीं रख सकते लेकिन पाकिस्तान में आधे से ज्यादा न्यूरोलॉजी के ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम ऐसे हैं जिसमें एक फैकल्टी है और वो छह छह लोगों को ट्रेन कर रहे हैं एंड स्टिल वी डोंट हैव इनफ ट्रेनिंग स्पॉट्स इन पाकिस्तान एट द सेम टाइम इट्स नॉट पॉसिबल टू टेक पीपल आउट ऑफ वेर दे आर एंड 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 ब्रिंग देम टू अ स्पेशल प्लेस 
जैसे मैं कहूँ चलो मैं यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ नब्रास्का में दस पंद्रह ट्रेन कर देता हूँ हर साल ये पॉसिबल नहीं हो सकता इसको मैं स्केल नहीं कर सकता मैं दस भी शुरू करूँ तो मैं ज्यादा बढ़ नहीं सकता सो द सोल्यूशन आई थिंक वी आर कमिंग अप विद इज दैट वी नीड टू ट्रेन दैम वेर दे आर जहाँ पे वो बैठे हैं जहाँ पे वो काम कर रहे हैं जहाँ पे वो प्रैक्टिस कर रहे हैं वहीं भी उनको सिखाना चाहिए और इन दी एंड इट्स द स्किल दैट मैटर्स इन नॉट द डिग्रीज और टाइटल्स और और नंबर्स और अल्फाबेट्स इन इन फ्रंट ऑफ दर नेम सो वट वी आर थिंकिंग ऑफ डूइंग इज दैट वी विल क्रिएट टू स्टार्ट विद वन ईयर स्पेशलिटी रोटेशन प्रोग्राम दे विल बी इंटेंशन ऑफ एट ब्लॉक्स that we will be doing in this kind of virtual rotation uh, these are the blocks listed we'll start with cardiology and we'll have neurology next and then hopefully either psychiatry or pediatrics and and so on and so forth these eight blocks were selected by consultation with our partners in pakistan and there will be two segments to it the, the of course the backbone of this whole program will be the live sessions but these live sessions will be very different than a typical webinar or a lecture these are not lectures these are live sessions और उसका इंटेंशन ये है कि इन एडिशन टू प्रेजेंटिंग द बेसिक इंफॉर्मेशन इन अ केस बेस्ड लर्निंग स्टाइल फॉर हाफ ऑफ द टाइम आधे घंटे में पढ़ा एक केस बेस्ड डिस्कशन स्टार्ट करने के बाद विल हैव अ ग्रुप ऑफ पैनलिस्ट हु विल डिबेट एंड डिस्कस विद ईच अदर क्योंकि उसमें पैनलिस्ट अमेरिका से भी हैं पाकिस्तान से भी हैं स्पेशलिस्ट भी हैं फैमिली मेडिसिन के भी हैं तो वो डिफरेंट पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू देंगे प्लस विल हैव द ऑडियंस इंगेज इन क्यू एन ए ड्यूरिंग दैट लाइव सेशन and we will get a feedback activity right at the end from the audience in that live session to see ke what have they understood so far ke you know write a two two line summary of what you got from it or write two things that you still are not sure about so that we know how engaged the audience is and how much useful learning is going on in addition to that what we have created is that we will have a focused group of participant jinko hum registered participant keh le in contrast to just drop in participant jo ke kisi bhi session mein aake ja sakte hain wo sab live sessions mein engage honge lekin the registered participant ka jo ek core hoga they will continue to have some assignment to do in between the webinars so for the rest of the week there will be something for them to do an online discussion platform to engage on something to complete at home an activity to do something simple that they can do but that is useful for their learning and is important for us to know ke wo unki learning ho rahi hai aur kis tarah ki ho rahi hai that will be done for that for their core cohort which will be probably about uh, anywhere between 50 to 100 but i think closer to 70 or something like that uh, for each rotation और हर रोटेशन के लिए हम नए सिरे से कोहार्ट बिल्ड करेंगे क्योंकि नॉट एवरीबॉडी वांट्स टू डू ऑल द एट रोटेशन बट विल सी अबाउट दैट this is the online discussion i talked about there will be some form of a competition there will be some awards and scores and some measures of success we will try to keep so that people know that they are getting a feedback of how useful the whole process is going on so far and the goal here is to have a good feedback feedback from the learners to the faculty ki wo kya seekh rahe hain and feedback from faculty to the learners ki wo kya padhana cha rahe hain ya kya sikhana cha rahe hain and as i mentioned earlier the goal is not to take all these gps out of where they are or what they're doing but to build on their own cases in their own comfort zone anchoring the learning to their environment in an affordable manner ki wahi baithe baithe wo seekh sake ki ji kya nayi skill sets hame chahiye ya use karni hai जो इस प्रोग्राम को पुट टुगेदर करने का प्रोसेस था इट वाज अ लॉन्ग प्रोसेस दैट वी कॉल्ड अ डेल्फाई मेथड इन अ डेल्फाई मेथड आफ्टर द कंसेप्शन वी एंगेज ऑल द लीडरशिप दैट फ्रॉम एक्सपर्ट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड पाकिस्तानी डायस्पोरा एन पाकिस्तानी लीडरशिप ऑफ ऑल हेड्स ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फैमिली मेडिसिन एंड नेशनल फैमिली मेडिसिन कमेटी एंड देन वी फॉर्म एन इंटरेस्ट ग्रुप एंड वी स्टार्ट विद द इनिशियल आइडियाज फ्री फ्लोटिंग विदाउट गिविंग देम एनी बैकग्राउंड and that was put together that's the first step of a delphi method through these design meetings into a first draft proposal and then that draft was spread around to get a second round of input from any everyone which is the second phase of a delphi method ki ji ab ye proposal hai based on everybody's wisdom now what do you think about it what do you agree with and and what do you disagree with and why and that was collected again and a core group was formed to look at that information coming in so that i'm not the only one just putting everything together and then we created with a second draft of proposal we did a, another round of discussion on that draft and then we came up with this current proposal but there will be an ongoing once a month review of what are we doing how useful it is how effective it is and what needs to change so that it's a growing and adapting program that that fulfills the the purpose This is the current structure. These are our partner organization, uh, which you will hear from panels. हमारे पास मौजूद हैं आज इस ग्रुप से, which I am very thankful for. And uh, the overall oversight uh, is course directors. And course directors are not building the course; they are really providing an oversight. That everything lines and matches with each other. There is a group of medical educationists who are part of the core group who are helping us, making sure that if any assignments related questions, we can answer them. And then each of this rotation will have a team leader. 
along with two co-leader. A leader will be from one of the expat organization and co-leader from another one. And then one co-lead has to be from Pakistan, um, from the National Family Medicine Committee. And these three people, along with input from everyone, will be putting together the course or rotation or, or the topics or curriculum for each of these rotation with, of course, a big view or focus from the specialists themselves, but some feedback from the family medicine side so that uh, we try to match or align as much as we can. The curriculum design will be this kind of a process. We'll start with current curriculum from Pakistan. So we have curriculum from MCPS, FCPS, and the one-year certificate courses. We have already extracted all the topics that they're being taught on that rotation, like say cardiology. And then we take input from our Pakistani faculty and GPs, topic And then we take all that information to our expat faculty from all the organization and, and try to start selecting what are the priorities, what we think are the most useful from an outsider perspective. And then the team leadership take all this input together to start forming the, the first kind of a core of a curriculum shape that will then be shared with the course directors for any uh, feedback or suggestion. And the process will continue in this rotating cycle for each of the rotation. The delivery of the program will be online. Uh, jo bhi recordings hai, jo bhi lectures hai, they will be made available through a platform, which is a learning management system. The one I'll be using will be Apna Academy. This is my one that I use for UNMC, but we'll be using Apna Academy's platform that is similar, that will provide us an ability to keep track We'll have a way to track all of that. And there will be an online discussion platform, most likely WhatsApp. Otherwise, we have other options, but likely we'll stick with WhatsApp for now. And we're thinking about offering a certificate of completion at the end. And I'm applying to get CME for this program, hopefully from US. Otherwise, our backup option will be from Pakistan. But my preference will be again, we're working on that. So I, for this, what we started with was a quick uh, registration survey with the participants. And we have, I wanted to share some of the results back. We have 195 responses so far since we announced it about a week ago or so. Uh, and uh, I wanted to share some of the summary of those findings from the survey that we did with 195 participants. So one question I asked was that, who are you? Who's your employer? What setting are you in? 32.8% are self-employed, they're private practice GPs, they work on their own. Some of them are telemedicine or telehealth only, others are not. 11% are local hospital employed. So they are working in a hospital and salaried. 15% are in tertiary care hospitals, like teaching hospitals. 19% are in BHUs, government employees, and 21% are in DHQs. These are the ones who filled the survey out. So this is kind of capturing a snapshot of who might be our uh, audience when we start doing these rotations. I ask in a level of interest that, uh, do you want to just drop in on some live sessions or would you be dropping in most live sessions? Do you want to be registered for completing a rotation like a cardiology for a certification track? Or do you want to be registered for more than one rotation or for the whole year completing all eight certification track? Our idea was that meeting was that this is not possible for one year. People can't come to a week every week in a webinar and can't requirements complete requirements. But my surprise is that 74% of the people are saying they want to commit to one year certification track. They want to do all of these rotations and they want to get a full one year certificate. And then there is of course, some people who are uh, uh, okay with some rotations and there are very few people or 13% who wants to just do drop in of some, some live sessions or most live sessions. I also asked him about time and commitment of weekly session. This is another very big problem in our core group that we have discussed. One concern was that in Pakistan, every week, at a standard time, at a fixed time, to drop in, 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 to Every Saturday session, or in the majority, we have to do the same We have certificate program, registered program. So that's very encouraging. I think we have picked up a right time after a lot of debate. We time to do the same issues, the time zone differences, or that was what we finally settled on. Uh, I especially thankful to our Australian colleagues because this is the toughest time for them. I think it's 12 midnight or 11 p.m. or something like that, very late hours, but I'm, I'm uh, thankful to them. And then finally, one thing I wanted to share was this prior training. Just I said, our that this program will complement a basic foundation training, either one year or MCPS or some workshops. And if I take everyone who has done something, 
then 67% of our responders said that they have something done in family medicine. But there is still a big portion, 30%, who are saying that they have not done any kind of training in family medicine or they have forgotten to give up and they have no prior training. Nahi hai. This is still a sticking point for us because we are studying specialties pada rahe hai, and we so far have ignored the topics which are basic foundational topics hai, intentionally because we don't want to duplicate what was happening in Pakistan and redundancy. Nahi karna chahte the. So we have felt this program is better suited for people who have some prior training. But this is something we can experiment. We can have a pilot of some people without any prior training to see how they react and respond to this program. Uh, similarly, we are, I'm surprised that we have people who are students, who are telehealth, who are applying, some who are not working currently, but probably are looking to start telehealth or something. Uh, we have applicants from India and Bangladesh, UK, a lot of people from UK, some from Canada, and also a couple or a few from USA who are really wanting to be part of this uh, from a learner's perspective, not from a faculty perspective, but actually be able to be a student uh, and complete this training and, and, and finish this off. And that was also very surprising to me. So this was kind of the summary of the whole project. Of course, there are many challenges. There have been many challenges, but there are many, many more ahead. We are not new to this idea of challenges. We have done webinars for COVID. We have done 10 years weekly webinars chalaye hain merit mein humne certificate programs kiye hain i run a 6 months online mini fellowship uh, in movement disorder shahid is working on a stroke course we have worked with institutions in pakistan so it's not that we are naive it's not that we are very uh, foolhardy but we are dreamers and we do want to innovate and we do want to change we want to bring something new that has not been done before and i and i am personally very proud of uh, of these efforts uh, i'm thankful to all our partners organizations who are so fortunately panelists here with us who uh, I will uh, you know, leave uh, Dr. Shai to invite for, for their comments. And I'm really, really thankful for them uh, in putting this together. And I was just a face presenting on their behalf. Thank you so much. Shai. Thank you, Danish. Uh, <clears throat> a very uh, enlightening uh, introduction. I think um, uh, being this the first ever effort, uh, there's always, or there will always be room for improvement and and that's how the thing starts so you you have to start somewhere and that is why i would like to say that this uh, this effort that we put together may not be perfect uh, there's there may be a lot of criticisms uh, somewhere along the line along the journey some people might have felt differently um, and even disappointed uh, but please understand that this is the first uh, attempt and as we go forward, we will improve it. And, uh, and all what we want to do uh, is to do something. And, and if, we, if you wait for the perfect, you lose the opportunity to provide the, you know, the, what they say that the perfect is the enemy of the good. So yes, we want to improve all the time, but, but we want to do also. So, uh, so the a balance of uh, imagination and doing something is uh, the way forward. With that, I'll invite, uh, in the way that I see it on my screen, the panelists uh, who came. So, uh, so from uh, on the top is Abdul Jalil Khan, um, a very dynamic personality, um, a, a trained GP from uh, UK. Now, at this point in Peshawar, uh, a faculty in Khaber, um, uh, teaching hospitals and and. Uh, Khyber uh, Medical University uh, and very, very um, strong support of, uh, supporter of merit program. So Jalil, um, uh, please say a few words and then we can move on like this so that then we can uh, complete a round table for one time and then open up the questions. Well, thank you very much, Shahid Bhai. Um, yes, uh, as Danish, Danish has already explained, like, you know, the purpose of this, um, course and also the, um, the reason why we decided to run it um, online. Uh, I know a lot of people have many queries like, you know, what sort of, uh, if there are a lot of courses available, why we started doing it. So this is, as I said, like, you know, once we started uh, decide, um, explaining further, uh, the medical education is going to be able to explain it better, but this, uh, to increase the interactivity, we'll try our best, like, you know, what we could do. And that's why all the experts facilitator will be present, three facilitator uh, for each session. Uh, and we will definitely um, uh, try to scale it up, but it's a pilot project. We've got a lot of um, interest from students across Pakistan, um, mostly from primary health care, uh, public primary health care and the private 
both. And as I said, this is also part of the Yara Nebatan um, diaspora. Uh, and I'm glad to see, as um, a member of National Family Medicine Consultant, I'm uh, glad to see that all the um, um, uh, organization are on board. And the reason I'm saying that is because recently I was on in a webinar and when uh, where um, one of our colleague from APNE was uh, um, saying that he was doing some um, online webinars and stuff and he was doing some uh, telemedicine clinics in Pakistan uh, without support of any local uh, consultant or any local doctors there. And on the other side, we were doing, we were doing telemedicine and we were looking for a consultant from across UK or US to help us. So why couldn't we just collaborate here? So that's why, you know, the beauty of this program is, is collaborating between all the organizations and we'll be able to get uh, expertise from all over the um, world and hopefully it will be a very successful training and it will be fully supported by us and we'll get all the government endorsement for this as well. So inshallah, uh, as um, Dani said, I'm looking forward to kind of um, starting the program and hopefully um, this will be an effort which will continue and already the students have asked us to continue to add on more rotation. So it's likely possible that the first program will, it will continue to 18 months or 24 months, but we may have to start a couple more. Uh, so inshallah, looking forward to it and we'll fully support and we'll fully endorse the program. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jalil. Um, and, and Jalil uh, is um, uh, our liaison uh, for this program in, with the governmental sector and, and other, along with the, you know, other colleagues from Pakistan. Uh, next is Dr. Mohammed uh, Rana. Please introduce yourself and, and uh, a few uh, minutes, uh, one, one to two minutes of your comments. Um, uh, my name is, as uh, you know, brother mentioned that I'm uh, Mohammed Sagi Rana. So I'm a GP trained in UK and uh, working in UK um, in primary care. Um, uh, I, um, as you know, uh, previous participants have already mentioned that uh, um, this program is going to upscale our colleagues in U in Pakistan. Our uh, subsidies scheme for is it's going to be a very interactive program. So there are already quite few programs working in Pakistan. Uh, quite few courses are being conducted, and a lot of um, you know other avenues of learning. Like in Isma Yeke, up go from all over the world. You will get the experience. You will get the knowledge. You will um, um, know the how. Things are working out uh, in other parts of the uh, uh, other parts of the world, um, and I'm looking forward to be part of this uh, wonderful program. Uh, I time uh, I think it's a wonderful opportunity, not for our Pakistani colleagues to learn, but also for us to deliver whatever we have learned over the years. Thank you very much. Shahid, I want to recognize that Dr. Muhammad Sari Rana is representing APS UK or APSO. Uh, right, right. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Rana. Uh, uh, now, next is uh, Dr. Hisham Haq. Uh, he is also uh, one of the supporter of our program from the time that we started the conference in March in Pakistan, and he represents uh, Apne. Uh, Hisham, please go ahead. Thank you very much, Danish, Shahid Bhai, Sagir, Yusuf Bhai, and all the other speakers who tend to come, um, who've, who've come before me and who will come after me. Um, in primary care, Jyoti, uh, is the bedrock of any healthcare system. If we primary care, we will not do any work on primary care, then you can't stand up any health structure. Ye, this is a statement for my colleagues. I will tell you an example of this, that we health economics, how much money is spent, and how much money is spent effectively. And especially in our economically constrained or resource poor uh, provision which we have in Pakistan, we can take a change in that way and take a change in that way. So this is our medical program, is a collaboration. We've also had MOUs signed with our colleagues in Australia and we have a Europe-wise membership which we have a lot of contribute to this. We have a lot of colleagues who have done MRCGP who have relocated to Pakistan. We are in touch with them as well. Or yeah, education is also part of this structure, which is a vital part and it's the bedrock. Is ki upar phir mazid aap isko build up kar sakte hain ki economic models kis tarah leke aa sakte hain. Aap achhi tarikhe se matlab ek balance zindagi kaise kar sakte hain. Or aap ek aapki jo quality of care hai, usko aap overall kis tarikhe se improve kar sakte hain. To hamare pas bahut saare obviously participants hai jo ke across the globe register kar rahe hain iske liye. Lekin hamara jo bil khusus focus hoga. 
वो ये होगा कि एज जीपीज मतलब हम जीपी बाय ट्रेड तो मैं स्पेशलिस्ट के तौर पे नहीं सोचता हूँ मैं जनरल प्रैक्टिशनर के तौर पे सोचता हूँ जनरल प्रैक्टिशनर की जो सोच होती है जो क्लिनिक में काम कर रहा होता है जिसके पास इमीडिएटली लैब की रिसोर्स नहीं होती है उस फील्ड में आप किस तरीके से आप और किस तरीके से आप अपने स्किल्स को यूटिलाइज कर सकते हैं और ये एजुकेशन कोर्सेज किस तरीके से आपको एक खातर खा जी के तौर पर बना सकते हैं अब जीपी को हर कोई समझता है कि सेमी स्किल्ड होते हैं अनट्रेंड होते हैं लेकिन वी वॉन्ट टू एड्रेस दैट उनकी क्वालिफिकेशन रिकगनाइज नहीं होती है तो जिस तरह दानिश इज प्रॉब्लम ट्राइंग टू गेट सम रिकगनेशन एंड वी बी पार्टनरिंग अप विद देम एंड ट्राइंग टू हेल्प देम टू सी हाउ वी कैन फोकस फ्रॉम द यूके परस्पेक्टिव एज वेल टू अप स्किल एंड गेट आर कोर्स रिकगनाइज तो बट दिस इज अ फैंटास्टिक एंड एवर और ये वो वक्त आ रहा है कि जिस वक्त रिवर्स ब्रेन ड्रेन हो रही है यानी कि बहुत सारे डॉक्टर्स छोड़ के चले गए हैं लेकिन अब हम लोग वापस आ रहे हैं और वापस देना चाह रहे हैं और इन टेक्नोलॉजीज और ये कोरोना की वजह से दीज थिंग्स हैव बीन एक्सेलरेटेड बाय मे बी अबाउट फाइव और टेन इयर्स सो इट्स अ फैंटास्टिक अपॉर्चुनिटी आई वुड लाइक फॉर ऑल ऑफ आर पार्टिसिपेंट जो पाकिस्तान में है अपने कॉलिग्स को बताएं कि अगर इसमें अगर वो पार्टिसिपेट uh, uh, करेंगे तो उनको क्या फायदा होता है और इसमें इनका ही फायदा है हमारी तरफ से तो ये सारा वॉल्टियर काम है और हम अपनी तरफ से अपना बेस्ट लेके आएंगे वापस थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू शाम एंड Uh, I wanted to mention that Sham ka ek um, um, uh, interest uh, health economics hai, which is very important. जब बात होती थी पहले कि you know किस तरह आप जाहिर है Pakistani colleagues are our leaders. They are the people who are making uh, policies. Uh, we just have to or kind of advise them if they need our advice. And and medical economics is very important part of any discipline. how to uh, you know survive that discipline how to make them comfortable in the society because uh, uh, you know we we all are doing volunteer work but still at the end of the day you have to be a bread earner and you have to you know some um, in a you you want to um, apply your skills in a comfortable in, environment So thank you Sham next is Maria Mohan uh, she is a cardiologist and professor of cardiology in California in um, uh, uh, the university there and uh, she she will be the pioneer or first um, uh, segment of this program will be uh, done by her under her leadership uh, which will be the cardiology so uh, professor Maryam go ahead ji assalam alaikum can i share my screen ji ji please okay, okay. Jee, assalamualaikum, brother. We have had a very healthy discussion as far as uh, uh, cardiology is concerned. We have a group of uh, cardiologists who are very, very interested in participating. We do have a number of topics that they want to talk about, but uh, the problem is we only have eight slots. That was had been one of our limitations. So we try to encourage people to talk about topics that are of great interest to general practitioners. And after a number of discussion, we were able to line it down to eight topics. As far as the cardiology educational series is concerned, we thought we would be using it as a platform to share knowledge as applicable to cardiovascular condition, with with emphasis on patient care in Pakistan alone. All of the speakers are voluntary speakers. They have been speaking in academic situ- situations in United States as well as in UK and uh, in Australia. We will be using PowerPoint lectures with case-based approach, including EKGs. EKGs and case-based approach was the two questions that most of the family practitioners wanted from Pakistan. We would be putting in three to four multiple choice questions for them to answer either in between or towards the end of their uh, session. and all of these cases as you all know will be via zoom and we want to make sure that all the talks are geared towards family or general practitioners in pakistan all the talks will not exceed more than 40 minutes and we will have panelists both from pakistan as well as from united states and uk as well as from australia the elite for the moderation will be from uh, general practitioners of family practice in pakistan whereas the speakers will be cardiologists whereas the moderators will be family practitioners so we know we are able to meet their need not necessarily just give a talk that may be uh, construed as something that is a prepared speech and we thought that if we all work together we can make a difference these lectures are by invited speakers we have chosen dynamic speakers speakers that can have include audience participation 
And we hope that this announcement will be made by APNA Merit by using either social media that they can use for general and family practitioners in Pakistan. And we hope that it will be announced at least a few days in advance with the topic and speaker and the panelist name so that the talks can be ready and the audience can be ready with the question that they want to ask of the speakers. Panelists for GP and family practice are to be selected by a family practice in Pakistan. And we're still working on getting the panelists as far as Pakistan is concerned. We do have panelists as far as United States is concerned uh, to help out with cardiology as needed. And we are hoping that the speakers will be introduced either by medical students or by medical residents in Pakistan. We already have lined up a couple of uh, residents who want to introduce our speakers. And they're pretty dynamic. I was really surprised at how much they know cardiology, how much they know about what is going on in the United States. And I was very happy to see their interest in this particular program. The lectures, as you know, will be via Zoom. Question and answer discussion will be from the panelists as well as the audience, only after the formal presentation, which lasts no more than 40 minutes. So we give at least 20 minutes for the audience to be more actively involved with us. Total duration of the meeting we are assuming is going to be one hour on Saturday at 7 p.m. in Pakistan, but we have the option of letting it run over by another half hour as needed. But we hope that everybody will start right on time so that we can get done right on time because we understand people in UK and in Australia, they have a time limitation and it's going to be past midnight for them. It is going to be weekly cardiology lecture series and we hope it's going to start in October 2020 and it's going to last for about eight weeks. Uh, we are hoping for an extension, but I don't think it's possible at this time. We may continue with the extension or maybe add on to after other series are over. And we, we hope that these will be recorded and archived in Apna Merit. Title of the talk with academic affiliation of the speakers will be known well ahead of time and background activities by participants will follow in between with assignments as needed. These are the list of our speakers that has already lined up. We had three people fighting for one topic and we want to make sure that we, everybody is well represented. The first speaker that we have assigned is uh, Rizwan Khalid, who is a president elect of APNA and he's chosen the topic of ischemic heart disease. Every talk will have at least three to four EKGs. So the audience can have the EKGs also because that was one of the main thing that they had been asking. We have involvement from Australia by Dr. Asrar and as well as Dr. Mahbub Alam. Second speaker will be Dr. Asad Akbar, who is going to represent Pakistan in cardiology. And he's going to talk about valvular heart disease. And we have two physicians from Pakistan who want to act as moderators. Right now, Dr. Abram, uh, Amber Ashraf from Pakistan in Peshawar. She will participate in this particular talk as a panelist. The third speaker that we have is uh, Maria Vikar. She, she is the president of APCNA, and she's going to talk about atrial fibrillation. Dr. Zahur Ahmed Khan, EP from Pakistan, is very interested in acting as a participant as well as panelist for that particular uh, talk. We have Dr. Nabi Sharif, who was very well received in Peshawar when he talked to the medical students and residents, and is going to talk about recognition and treatment of ventricular arrhythmias. Then we have Dr. Asrar from UK, who is very interested in talking about syncope. He's an interventionalist, but he's going to make sure that he includes topics like neurocardiogenic syncope, vasovagal syncope, as well as his stroke, in addition to talking about cardiology-related causes of syncope. Sikandar Khel is a cardiology fellow, and he has been uh, very active in uh, setting up some of the discussions about uh, cardiology, and he's going to talk about cardiac imaging, when to request and when not to, as it relates to family practice physicians, as well as general practitioners. Dr. Mahmoud Alam will, uh, is interested in talking about primary prevention in cardiology, and we're still working on getting a good speaker for hypertension. So this is the list of our speakers, and these are the eight slots that has been assigned to us by Danish Bhatti, and we choose the topic based on the interest of the general practitioners and the family practitioners, not by the cardiologists themselves. I thank you for your attention. Thank you, uh, Professor Mariam. That is a very comprehensive list of, uh, and so that gives us a flavor also of how this program was conceived and what does we mean that the specialist or subspecialist having, um, you know, these slots and different slots, it's to replicate uh, what what a family practice residency is here in uh, in America, then 
that the resident rotates through different um, units like cardiology and neurology and others. So they get a flavor of how these specialists work. But of course, they um, extract and are they are taught to, uh, to what the basic primary care um, important preventive aspect uh, is. So we're trying to replicate that. Next is um, uh, uh, Noreen Rafiq, who is the uh, uh, program director of uh, 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 family Practice uh, Residency Program, Creighton University in uh, uh, Nebraska, uh, Omaha, Nebraska. And she has been with us from the beginning, in fact, the lead uh, for the family practice uh, in Merit. And, uh, and we have an MOU. Actually, she, she brought her own, uh, the whole of Family Practice Program. Uh, they, are, they are very excited that whenever they need, um, they will be collaborating with us. So Noreen, um, welcome and uh, say a few words in the next minute or two. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much um, for making me the part of it. Thank you, Danish Shahid Bhai and uh, Dr. Nahid Usmani. Um, wonderful uh, beginning. I, you know, as a family practice, I can tell that we need help of our specialists, even when I am making a curriculum for our residents. We do invite our specialists from Creighton to help us out with different topics. So this is this is a huge, huge step towards helping um, a family practice uh, who are everything, as Danish said, they are rheumatologists, they are cardiologists, they are gastroenterologists, they are infectious disease and everything. Um, I have just two comments. Number one, um, it is very important to understand that uh, not every single person comes from the same medical knowledge. A lot of times we say, okay, these, are, these have all done medical school, so they probably have this basic information. And we will be surprised that they may not. Um, and they, they come from different level of uh, education. Well, I shouldn't say education, but knowledge. Um, so uh, I think number one, the most important thing that is uh, the lectures need to be very basic. If, if a person is sitting in a basic health unit um, and comes and says, you know, I have palpitations, that's how he's gonna present. So how we start that, how we start managing that. And uh, looking at the topics, I'm very impressed. I think uh, cardiology is probably going to cover majority of that stuff. So that is very important. Uh, number two, uh, I would uh, highly, highly think that preventive care is the bread and butter of family practice. There is, uh, you, uh, this is what we are, uh, you know, we can do a little bit of specialist medicine, but I think preventive care is what we do. This is our bread and butter. So I, the, I see that in cardiology, they have already um, put a whole lecture on primary care, on primary, primary prevention of cardiac problems. I feel either there can be maybe two and three sessions in which we cover most of the stuff like mammograms, uh, pap smears, uh, colonoscopies, um, all the preventive stuff that is needed um, or maybe make it uh, as part of different rotations that our family practice would go. Um, I'll be more than happy to uh, do any kind of a help that is needed uh, by anyone. I think the majority of the input will be from the fam Pakistani family practice, but I feel the purpose of this course is that we can bring them at par uh, with the training that our family practice gets here in US. Um, so um, uh, glad to be part of it uh, and uh, extending all my help. Thank you. Thank you, Noreen. Um, this is a really, really important part that you touched upon. And, uh, and the preventive care, primary care, I think this is the most cost-effective way, particularly a developing country like Pakistan, uh, where uh, you know the resources um, may not be as many or as much as the developed countries in the West, and so so adapting that uh, would go a long way. And I think the Pakistani government, Pakistani uh, people, uh, Pakistani government definitely have that uh, intention, and Pakistani population um, definitely uh, deserve a cost-effective care, which already 
Pakistani colleague, and we'll talk to Nasir Shah uh, about that. They are doing uh, a very strong uh, academic personality and leader uh, in Pakistan. Uh, uh, but like I said, that the, I just wanted to add this, that the, there are other comments and questions also that could it be uh, a longer course? Yes, of course, uh, when we uh, talked about um, uh, curriculum, the pediatrics um, need to be um, a big portion because in Pakistan, pediatric population is more than the developed countries. So yes, I, I would say easily six more months, if not one year, but, uh, but our challenge was to put together uh, these, all these important aspects in one year. But uh, of course, going forward, we can uh, definitely look into um, expanding it or, or putting uh, together in a way that we can address everything. So Professor Nasir Shah is the, one of the few professors in family medicine. Uh, he is the uh, uh, head uh, of department in uh, University of Health Sciences in Lahore. He ran very um, successful courses. He has done a lot to promote family practice. He is a convener uh, of the um, National Family Medicine uh, Committee, as well as the Dean uh, of uh, um, Family Medicine in FCPS. So Professor Nancy Shah, one to two minutes, your comments. Yes, uh, first of all, my sincere apologies. Somehow my Zoom was not working. Then luckily I got a, an expert with me. So it was out um, Since I was the, in the end, so I had more time to write my points. Just to briefly one by one. I think uh, need of family medicine uh, is now established in Pakistan in private, public, government, everywhere. Much of that end uh, is secure now. Now we can focus on the implementation, how to go forward. Just want to reiterate and just to admire and appreciate the work of Danish, Apna and all, Dr. Yusuf and everyone. This implementation ki approach, ki hai na, they are excellent. A collaborative approach. Okay, Pakistan is parallel chalti hai. Now we are a consolidated approach. Number two, flexibility and the open-mindedness or plus the survey ke zariye, involve the people and get the real figure well, inshallah these are keys to success i would like to appreciate uh, the whole team for this dusra kuch cheeze hain jo humble suggestions hain agar isme shamil ki jaye like in family medicine patient will not come with the um, uh, atrial fibrillation he will come with palpitation maybe as a GP, palpitation is not cardiac causes. Maybe she is anemic, severe, she is taking some drugs, maybe anxious with something. Like in other list of topics, may approach a session for approach like loss of consciousness. There could be TIA, atonic seizure, syncope, maybe arrhythmia. So it's an approach build up, just a humble suggestion. Number two. Uh, we are starting with CME programs. Now, it's very good. With time, the uh, lowest suggestions we have, we can start building on uh, some major programs leading to professional growth of doctors, which make them specialist and get post as a specialist or senior registrar. Maybe connecting into existing programs, just strengthening them. A professional growth is demand increases, and they feel honored. They start uh, becoming teachers. They start teaching others. Uh, snowballing effect one sec times me. So, yeah, some suggestions. The eight for us a myth, a baby, since I work with them, Johamari speed head, a wo mujin at the Pakistan K GPS K subject for his other. Maybe we are slightly intensive. So, which are they said catch in a car by this thing, Mira, will be Jabi Akar Moka Milta. Please do consider slowing it down weekly, maybe too much. Or do say, yeah. Uh, in the group, you will find different GPs of different caliber, different experience, different knowledge. A puri range milegi from high performance to low. My request is that target we have to do GPs which are who have AVC bhi nahi aati. ECG ko dekhe unko khauf aata. For example, ya chest X ko. So keeping it to very basic, maybe having some informal um, video for them, just to orient them, just to prepare them for the webinar. Many of them will not be able to grasp me. So, I will request that you will be able to do this. You will be able to do this. Sort of thing. 
just preparing for them bas ye meri humble suggestion hai once again uh, thank you for all these efforts and then congratulate all of you uh, inshallah i'm looking forward to work for this yeah, thank, thank you that's a very very um, important and um, and interesting and really valuable suggestions i would say that the time has not um, you know gone for the suggestion that you gave for um, uh, what uh, norin also said palpitation versus uh, atrial fibrillation uh, because abhi to speakers uh, ne apne presentations banani hai apne programs banane hai so we, we talked about it uh, dr nahid our president also uh, um, mentioned uh, all the time that we should be, we should give a case in the beginning of the talk or ye problem oriented hone chahiye jo bhi hamari talks hain they should not be a didactic lecture ke ji aaj atrial fibrillation pe lecture hai balki wo palpitation pe hoga isi tarah jo neurology ke lecture hai jaisa aapne kaha wo stroke ya tia ye pe nahi hoga balki wo loss of consciousness ya numbness um ya hemiparesis ya walking difficulty and ya aap se chala nahi ja raha is tarah ki jo common complaints hain डिजीनेस नाट के वो डिजीज के बारे में नहीं हम बात करेंगे बल्कि सिम्टम्स और प्रेजेंटेशन के बारे में बात करेंगे मेरा ख्याल है जितने भी हमारे लेक्चर ऑफकोर्स दानिश एंड अदर हु आर मोर इन्वॉल्व इन द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द प्रोग्राम इंक्लूडिंग यू योर सेल्फ विल विल एड्रेस दैट दैट दे विल स्टार्ट विद ए शॉर्ट केस एंड देन टॉक अबाउट द प्रॉब्लम and not the disease talk about the problem and then differential diagnosis and how to narrow it down to uske sath uh, baki jo time ki aapne baat ki wo wohi baat hai ki uh, again ek saal bhi jo hai na wo lag raha hai ki kam hai to do saal agar hum kare aur usko bhi speed speed aapki baat waise bilkul sahi hai lekin usme thoda sa balance ye rakhna hota hai ki agar bahut hi lamba kar dein teen char saal wo they they get lost also about the whole thing about the whole overview so there has to be a balance of course the the uh, presenter and the faculty would address that so last but not the least in the in the uh, norin i'll come back to you first let me uh, fin- finish the panel um, round table and last but not the least is the um, our uh, friend and colleague from australia uh dr yusuf i know him from his um a student life through his journey in Sa- uh, south africa a very organized and methodical academician and he has done great in uh australia with working with the government's uh royal um college there and also a lot of work a lot of work in pakistan so yusuf aap apne uh, comments 1 to 2 minutes uh thank you very much shahid bhai um Uh, look uh, assalamu alaikum everyone and uh, it's a privilege to be among all of you and especially uh, all my colleagues from uh, all the countries who are co-directors and co-leads of this program but most importantly um, the champions of family medicine in pakistan uh, i think it's a great privilege to be among uh, such uh, a great collection of uh, brilliant minds who are well motivated to support a cohort of doctors who really want who are self motivated to really want to improve their skills in family medicine um just very briefly i'll probably summarize now being the la- lucky last i think for pakistan to be a strong nation it has to be a healthy nation and a primary health care system is the foundation to build a healthy nation uh, as an organization aap has been working on a comprehensive strategy to build a strong primary health care system in pakistan and family medicine is one of the key elements of our strategy along with nursing and allied health to build capacity in pakistan to strengthen the primary health care system so very briefly uh, talking about this program itself i think everyone has uh, comprehensively explained i'm just going to summarize the foundation key principles of this program as danish has already mentioned i think the one of the key thing is to influence the prior knowledge and as nasir has mentioned different people come at a different level of knowledge and it's going to be very practical program not a theoretical lecture series second thing of course it has to be relevant to general practice so what we have done in the structure of this program that we have engaged the family physicians from pakistan as well as across the world 
to ensure that family medicine is the foundation of each elements of this program. Third thing is the engagement of the learners with their motivation and needs. And I think that's where starting with the surveys as, long, as well as the ongoing feedback loop within the program, we will make sure that it respond to the needs as well as the motivation of the learners. The fourth principle is the application of knowledge and skills in the context of Pakistan. Of course, uh, in Western world, uh, sometime as uh, Danish has very well summarized that we have access of resources, we have access of specialities and things can be done very differently. In Pakistan, we need to build first capacity within the general practice and then develop some sort of a referral pathway or a network of people who can work together to improve the health of the people in different speciality. And lastly, connection with the community and practice beyond the learning environment, which means your learning does not finish just in the webinar. It actually starts from the webinar. It gives you that motivation to apply that knowledge, apply those skills in your community of interest to ensure that it actually change and improve your practice. So with these uh, five foundation principles, inshallah, I'm sure this program will be a success. And the last thing which we have done is that each webinar will be followed up with what we call a reinforcement activity. We are not calling it assessment because what we want to do is actually, it is again based the motivation of the learners and it can be in form of follow-up questionnaires, discussions, reflections, reviews, journals, et cetera. So there are many different ways in which this reinforcement activity can ensure that what you have learned that is actually gelled into your, into your professional activities as well. So thank you very much. I look forward for this very uh, exciting program, inshallah. And uh, back to you, Danish and Shahid. Thank you, Yusuf. Uh, so that completes our uh, uh, round table uh, comments and discussion from our panelists. Uh, I think the purpose of this program was more of a showcase and uh, introductory, um, you know, session to the, uh, you know, attendees, what we are intending to do, what we are going to do. But I think we, uh, although we are about the time, but we may extend it for 10 minutes and uh, for any uh, question and answer. So Danish, you can also look at the uh, question uh, and answer uh, uh, I'm also I, I have looked at the, uh, them and we can summarize and give those answers um, rather than uh, you know taking up one by one uh, in the meantime I will ask Noreen she had a question or comment to uh, to do that um, I just wanted to reinforce what dr. Jelani said uh, I think that is most important approach um, patients will not come with AFib or ventricular arrhythmia. People will come with palpitations. Um, people will not come and say, I have osteoarthritis. They'll come with joint pain. So I think the approach would be extremely important uh, in teaching family practice how to manage. Number two, uh, something that I was thinking, if it might be a good idea, obviously you cannot cover cardiology in eight weeks it will be uh, not fair to tell cardiologists to teach everything to family practice in eight weeks. So I think uh, what is important is if, if there can be some kind of handouts that can be given prior uh, to the talk and say, all right, this is kind of a, a baseline. I, we would like you to read through it. Um, I would probably tell you how many residents, even after third year of uh, residency still get scared to look at an EKG and say, oh gosh, you know, what is going on here? So EKG would be honestly, if somebody's sitting in a, um, in, in, in a small town would be, could be a lifesaver for a patient. So uh, uh, again, uh, just uh, reinforcing, go to the basics. Uh, you can, we can talk about management a little bit. Obviously, if somebody comes with AFA with RVR, you know, what can you do right away and send the patient over to a tertiary hospital, but what can be done right there? Um, so uh, that would be my suggestion. And I 100% agree with Dr. Jelani of all his points that he mentioned. Thank you. Um, I, uh, I know some other panelists also have comments, but can I just quickly say that sure, sure. we are going to run a little bit over time. Can we also allow some of the attendees who want to make a comment to have microphone, if they can raise their hand, if they want to make any comment, 
uh, please uh, use the raise hand feature and we'll try to get microphone to you after the panelist comments. Please in share. the meantime, I think uh, one of the question from Sadia uh, Khan is that do we have uh, to limit the numbers? Yeah, so I, I can, uh, about the, I yeah, can go ahead. On. Uh, I think the, uh, there are two tracks to the program. So there is live sessions which are drop in. There is no limit to numbers there. Anybody can join the live session as many times, as many they want. There is no cost to it. They're all free. The, the cost, the fee, the certification, the limitation of number comes where we are planning to provide an oversight with, with assignments and weekly engagement. Or masla ye hai ke faculty ne aur bhi kaam karne hai. Or volunteer time hota hai. Aap kitni ke assignment review kar lenge. Aap kitni ke feedback de denge. So if we do this, 100, 200, 400 people have been and all assignments are giving and we don't see anyone, we don't give feedback, then the program loses its value and meaning. To keep it meaningful, to keep it uh, useful, I think may, even 50 is a big number, but maybe 50 we can handle with the involved faculty. It will get burned out in the art of the week. If you participate in discussions every week, you're assignments, you're reviewing assignments, feedback, so I'm sure that it will be difficult for people to get out of the week. It will be difficult for people to get out of the week. I have done it. और मैं जो है 12 लोगों को लेके करता हूं 6 महीने का प्रोग्राम एंड आई न्यू हाउ टफ इट इज कि आपके दूसरी एंगेजमेंट्स भी हैं आपने डिनर्स पे भी जाना है फैमिली को भी टाइम देना है और अपने जो आपकी असाइनमेंट्स आपकी जॉब की भी हैं सो दैट्स व्हाई वी हैव टू पुट सम नंबर ऑन इट बट दैट वी विल कंटिन्यू टू रिव्यू जी शायद जी बिल्कुल दानिश और उसका एक ये भी है कि जो इस वक्त एग्जिस्टिंग फैकल्टी है आई थिंक दे वी वांट टू सी दैट दे कैन they can achieve their objectives or objectives of, of the program with 50 people. If we realize the next time that we have more faculty or this faculty will uh, can be, um, you know, doing justice to this objective of the program with uh, more attendees, then we can have more attendees. But like Danish said, we do not want to dilute or do, we do not want to do not a good job in, in doing what we intend to do. Um, if uh, there is any question, we have some panelists raising their hand. Maybe we can start with uh, Dr. Naheed Usman. Dr. Naheed, hey, Naheed aap, uh, uh, comments. Uh, after... I, I think this is so exciting. Like in one of the th having worked in Pakistan for five years and having that experience, how a Pakistani physician is trained in medicine. One of the experiences that I had was that a basic level of competency uh, You are taking established general practitioners in Pakistan or people uh, who are not established at the beginning of their career. There should be a requirement that they should have basic life support and advanced life support training which is on-site. And I know there are many institutions in Pakistan who are offering that course. So I would highly encourage the uh, you know, program uh, directors of, the, uh, of this program to institute that. That those register, physicians register, their basic requirement should be that like we have in residency, that ACLS or BLS, so that uh, you know, then you have that confidence. And they should be a requirement every year. At the end of the training program, they should have it uh, do it again. Secondly, uh, what I realized when I worked in Pakistan was that you are learning, but your medical officers or junior staff they really want like a handbook or a, a, you know, a little booklet that gives them the pearls, what to do, what to, you know, what are the EKGs like, et cetera, something. As you go through cardiology and dif different things, you can ask the presenters to put together a series of pearls on the topic they are covering. At the end of the, of the day, this consortium can publish that handbook of pearls that the graduates can use as a, you know, a standard of care. And I think that would really be useful because that's what physicians in Pakistan who are very busy and, uh, you know, and need quick references for things that they're not used to seeing day in, day out. So those are my two suggestions. Thank you. 
I think Nai, that uh, these are really important that if the faculty and the directors take notice that maybe there's a way as we go along to develop uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, guidelines in a, in a simple uh, terms, although the, uh, the guidelines are available in UK, Australia and America and, and uh, anywhere else, European guidelines as well. Uh, but instead of copy pasting them, working with the faculty like Dr. Uh, uh, Professor Nasir Shah and others in Pakistan, Jalil, um, if that can be done, uh, a small booklet or uh, a reference point where the, uh, not only the attendees, maybe the other people can maybe benefit from that uh, kind of a handout. Uh, so any other... Um, uh, I Danish see Dr. Jalil Khan raise his hand. J Dr. Jalil, please go ahead. Jalil, you had a comment. Uh, he might be busy with... Yeah, so one after the uh, comment of Dr. Naid Usmani was uh, good points. And that's the reason um, the 50 students which uh, we're going to select, going to have a selection criteria. I know Nasir Shah Sab showed some reservation, like some people may have found it difficult. But this is the reason, you know, the 50 students are going to be selected on a strict criteria. And the criteria will be identified by the course directors and along with the National Family Medicine Committee of Pakistan. So we will look into it and we'll ensure that these students have done even the MCPS trainees have done ACLS, BLS. Uh, our trainees of the Diploma Family Medicine have done it as well. So we look into it. The second important thing was which a uh, point raised by panelists and um, uh, some uh, the, some of the participants as well was about the um, uh, that instead of doing it uh, a problem based, you do it symptom based. So this is the reason for every rotation we have nominated three um, co leads and one of them will be always, um, I think it's a uh, family physician um, and um, preferably the National Family Medicine Committee member. So I think that's the reason he's there and that's what he need to ensure. However, if one person I would suggest uh, is finding it difficult to take the responsibility for the whole um, uh, rotation, I think we can always um, you know, um, give them hands and then it could be a couple of uh, family physician as a, so, uh, as a kind of like a, a co-lead, you wanna call it or as a facilitator or who can then, or even as a panelist, so they can, um, uh, you know, the, whoever the presenter is, so they can have a look at the um, topic first and they can even have a quick chat instead, I would say rather, you know, that what sort of participant we, because especially for the first time. So at least we know like, you know, what sort of participant we having or plus as I said, and I'm sure like, you know, most of the, um, um, the facilitators, you know, the consultant, the name they mentioned from Australia, UK, most of them are already trained, you know, because we invite a lot of guest speakers from very specialities and they know like, you know, how to pitch things, with, you know, to GPs. And instead of, you know, going to complex um, um, problem-based uh, teaching, they normally go to, you know, like um, symptom-based approach. And that's always in, uh, whenever you try to, uh, cover more topics in a small session. So you always go from symptom uh, perspective rather than the disease perspective. So I think that will be already um, looked at. Uh, first yeah. one will be a steering process. So I would request uh, Danish and Shahid Bai and uh, Nasir Shah, Hina, other, all the facilities. I know Hina and um, Saima has been nominated for this, but I would suggest like, you know, if a couple of us, we will learn for the next time as well. And also like, you know, there will be an extra pair of hands so inshallah we'll ensure, uh, but a teething problem will be there in the first one and inshallah from the next uh, rotation things going to be going more smooth. Yeah, so, thank you Jalil, uh, very valuable. Uh, Danish, can you um, so quickly... We are um, really uh, we're getting out of time, but there are a couple of raised hands from Pakistan yeah. that I would uh, love to the, the, hear from. And I wanted to uh, uh, answer, uh, you, you, I would like you to answer a question about is do we did we have you know already closed the selection of the candidates okay. is still going on yeah. or we'll, we'll, and what is the criteria we'll for the election? Yeah. Uh, uh, Sadia Khan from Pakistan, please go ahead. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes we can. Okay, uh, I just wanted to really congratulate you and thank you and thank you for taking this wonderful initiative, uh, Dr. Danish and Dr. Shahid and Dr. Usmani. All of you are living in uh, abroad, but you are thinking about uh, giving back to Pakistan. That is a 
that is uh, hats off to you for this. And uh, Dr. Maria Morton, when she mentioned in, about cardiology lectures, she wanted to even give more lectures and more, dedicate more time towards this. I really appreciate uh, the efforts that you guys are doing and bringing up such a wonderful program. While I was working in UK myself, doing my MRCGP, I used to also think about my country. But when I came back and I had an opportunity to practice in a very remote area, I realized that uh, the, the problems that uh, GPs or family practitioners they face uh, when they see the patients is, uh, is something that we don't, we are not aware of when we are uh, working abroad. So for instance, uh, a lot of children would die on the way when they, when they are referred to the tertiary care hospital. And a very simple communication and simple recognition of emergency and life-threatening conditions is so important to detect to save lives. So I think these should be also kind of uh, kept in mind while uh, developing and training programs. And Thank I, you, Dr. Sandhya. Yeah, sorry, we're running out of time. So again, I'll give more and more opportunity to other people. Dr. Fahad Farooq Khan, if you have any comment, please unmute yourself, Dr. Fahad. We can go to next. Uh... Okay, I think Dr. Morton had a comment. Dr. Morton. Yeah, I just want to compliment Dr. Narin for Rafiq's uh, question. We do understand uh, that uh, we are trying to increase the basic knowledge of the family practitioners in Pakistan, but most of the speakers in cardiology have been chosen who can speak at the level of the general practitioners. And they will start with a case-based approach. Yes, it is understood the patient has not read a cardiology textbook. We know the family practitioners have not read a cardiology textbook. And they will start with cases that are being dealt with on an everyday basis. For example, as you mentioned about atrial fibrillation, they will not start with talking about atrial fibrillation to begin with. But they will talk about a person that's coming with hypothyroidism, who's coming with palpitation. What do I do next? What does the EKG look like? And this is what the EKG looks like. And they will just go through the basic of how to look at the EKG, what the patient's heart rate is, and then go from there. And what we have decided is we'll, the speakers will be talking to with the moderators at least a few days ahead of time. So they are on the same page and they get the input from the family practitioners as what the family practitioners wants to hear, not what the cardiologist wants to say. So that way we stay in touch with each other and we know we are meeting their needs, not the need of the speaker. Thank you, Dr. Thank Mohit. you. Uh, Dr. Uh, Fahad, you wanna try again? Okay, so I'm gonna quickly answer your question, uh, Shahid uh, The program uh, selection or applicant selection has not been done. We're still collecting all the uh, interested participants or applicants. So there is a registration link that was on the uh, flyers. It has been posted in the chat box here. We will try to send out that registration link again. Please fill out your registrations and share it with anyone who wants to be considered. Uh, we will have to unfortunately go through some process uh, of selection, but we will keep everyone else in the loop. We'll keep letting them know about our live session so they can drop in any anytime they want, even if they're not selected, but we still have to do the selection process. Uh, Danish, I also wanted to um, uh, comment on the uh, a very good point raised from Pakistan, from Sadia that, uh, you know, the, uh, the general practitioner, primary care uh, uh, and family medicine uh, uh, specialists should know when to refer the patient uh, to the hospital. And I think we have in this course, um, uh, sections from emergency medicine specialist or uh, so that, that will focus on that. But I would think that all the faculty know that in their teaching and in their engagement, they will incorporate when, for example, cardiologist will tell when to refer a patient to the uh, same thing with the neurologist, psychiatrist and others who will, um, have this aspect in their teaching when to refer to uh, a hospital and not uh, before it's uh, too late. Danish, I would like to um, invite, I think uh, Zahid has joined a little late, has been uh, a part of uh, this program and, and also the faculty program um, in Merit. So if you have comments from, uh, Zahid is a general uh, family medicine specialist, general practitioner from Calgary, Canada, and have been working with uh, most of the faculty here. Zahid, do you have 
Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, can everybody hear me? Yes, yes. Uh, sorry, I joined late. I totally messed up with the time. Uh, so, Calgary over time is, uh, well, I think, 7 a.m. So, totally messed up. Anyway, so it's a great program. I think I agree with uh, Noreen and um, I heard her uh, when I joined. So, and the other, uh, um, my colleagues, they have the same kind of feeling, family physicians, that it should be at family medicine, family physicians level. Um, basic thing, I mean, uh, it's great that uh, specialists are um, going through all these rotations, but uh, moderation should be, I think uh, that's what I understand, my understanding is moderation is done by family physicians and um, there should be aspect of family medicine in, in each and every webinar or scene, uh, when we are delivering it. And at, at the end, we, somebody should have to summar, summarize and say, that, okay, family medicine, if I'm sitting in a GP practice, what I'm gonna do, how I'll benefit from this topic today and how I, I will apply uh, to my daily practice and how to recognize the emergency um, from urgent cases, urgent uh, presentation to non-urgent presentation and when to refer, when not to refer. I think that's uh, that should be, this. there should be some key points. And also I agree with Dr. Nahir Usmani that she said that there should be some kind of handouts or booklet, course um, material. I think that gives something to have it in hand and go, go through uh, the same thing, like when you're um, uh, listening to the webinar, uh, maybe before the webinar is ideal, but if not possible, maybe afterwards, should maybe something downloadable or booklet as course progresses, probably that'll be beneficial. That's what I have for comment. Thank you very much. Anish, you have any more questions from the audience? No, I think, uh, unfortunately, we're also running out of time. Shad, we have another meeting now, so we probably would have to wrap it up now. And close okay. It. All right. Yeah. Thank you, um, everyone. Um, if uh, anybody has last uh, uh, comment, I think we are going to um, wrap it up. Uh, I think we had a very good um, discussion. Um, we presented the program, how it uh, will run, and uh, the selection of candidates emphasis that we will uh, focus on family practice. We will focus on a problem-based, symptom-based approach. Uh, we will focus on uh, the participation in each module, in each lecture, in each talk and topic. There will be a family practice uh, specialist or general practitioner uh, um, from Pakistan uh, uh, and, and or from um, internationally, who will uh, maybe, uh, like Zahid pointed out, at the end summarize in five, 10 minutes what was, uh, uh, you know, talked about, what was achieved, and, uh, and, and take home points, what we call it. Uh, what is the take home message will be from a general practitioner or family medicine specialist. And, uh, and of course, we keep on improving um, this program as we go. Um, and, uh, and like I said, that uh, this is our first humble um, effort. And, uh, and we're, we are here to learn from Pakistani colleagues, from Pakistani general practitioners, and, um, and make it better. So I uh, really appreciate everyone's uh, uh, Danish, you presenting, Nahi Dusmani. Uh, welcoming and uh, guiding us uh, as the APNA president and all the panelists from UK, uh, Australia, uh, and Pakistan, uh, as well as all the attendees. Attendees make our, um, uh, you know, hamare uh, program The most important is the engagement of attendees and participants. So thank you all. Uh, Sorry, can I just make one comment quickly? Sorry, I just wanted to say that this project you are doing is the information government sector because it might be worth about 10% of the participants from BHU RHCs. So, Hina, Jalil is the government liaison. If it is the government liaison, then it will not be able to do it. Now, Jalil will phone Jalil Khan. Jalil Khan. So, uh, uh, he okay. is the government liaison who can work with you on it. Hina, we have a health minister or um, 
टास्क फोर्स जो हेल्थ केयर टास्क फोर्स के चेयर है डॉक्टर बर्की और न्यू हेल्थ मिनिस्टर डॉक्टर फैसल सुल्तान एंड एंड ऑल द यू नो अदर यारान वतन का जो सेक्शन है विद इन द हेल्थ मिनिस्ट्री इन सब को हमने ई मेल डाल दी थी और बता दिया था कि ये प्रोग्राम शुरू हो रहा है but i think oh. what you're saying is if we want to make sure that they got this information then uh, you uh, along with the uh, uh, delil had uh, made some plans on yeah. how to reach out to different lower levels and secretary office and things like that but it's probably too much to discuss it right now uh, okay. as we also have to jump to another meeting shayam okay assalam alaikum thank you everybody thank you, um, you allah okay i'm taking